Only quality people. Yes. Look at your relationships and ask yourself the question. Jim Ron would ask this question. What is this relationship doing to me? When you go for a walk with someone, something happens without being spoken. He said, either you adjust to their pace or they adjust to your pace. Whose pace have you adjusted to? And the study indicated that you earn within two to three thousand dollars of your, your closest friends and associates earn. What influence do they have on you? Dr. Dennis Kimbrough said, if you're the smartest one in your group, you need to get a new group. And somebody's saying, Les, can I change them? No, it's a full-time job changing yourself. Some people are so negative, they'll walk into a dark room and begin to develop. You could see your new thing tomorrow. You could see your breakthrough this week. You could get that scholarship this month. You could see your healing, your promotion, your abundance this year. When God says he's going to do a new thing, that means it's not going to be like the old thing. It's going to be different. The new thing may not be what you were expecting. It may not happen the way you thought it would. The Israelites could have thought God just defeat these Babylonians and will live here. They didn't think that God would take them into the desert. How could they survive out there. God was going to do it a different way. He was going to make streams in the desert. Stay open for how God is going to do it. Don't put him in a box and limit him to one way. Most of the time, the way we want it done is less than what God has in mind. What he has planned will be much bigger, much better. Trust him to do it his way. If we're set in how we want it to happen, we can miss the new thing. I was in another city driving a rental car recently. Victoria ran into the store to shop for a minute. I waited in the car and was going to make some phone calls. She said it'd be about 15 minutes. After an hour, my phone battery died. I usually bring my phone charger to plug into the car, but I forgot it. I looked in the glove compartment for one, looked in Victoria's bag. Maybe she had one, but nothing. I sat there and waited and waited, thinking about all the work I could be doing. At one point, I looked down by the gear shift and I saw this rubber pad about the size of a phone. I thought that's interesting and I sat my phone there. I heard my phone buzz. It started charging. I had a charger the whole time, but it wasn't what I was used to. I thought there would be a cord and I would have to plug it in. Can I tell you, some of the new things God is going to do in your life is not going to be what you're expecting. He's going to do it a different way, with different people, different circumstances. Could it be that God is doing a new thing now and you don't perceive it? He's opening a door, but you don't want to go through it. It's not what you thought it would look like. He's bringing people across your path that are divine connections, but they're not what you were expecting. Don't get set in your way. The new thing may not look like what you had in mind. A few years after I started ministering, the church began to grow. I thought we would build a new auditorium. That's the way I'd seen my father do it growing up. He had built sanctuary after sanctuary. We found some property right off the freeway by the other location. It seemed perfect to me, but when we went to close on it, the owner saw it out from under us. He didn't keep his word. I was disappointed. I knew that property was supposed to be ours. We found another hundred acre track not far away. The same thing happened. I couldn't understand why these doors kept closing. There were no more large tracts of land to build on by the other location. My father always said that he would never move the church. My mind wasn't open for the new thing that God had in store. About six months later, the compact center came available. I never dreamed we could have this building. This was so much bigger and better than I ever imagined. It was a three-year battle, but we saw the hand of God make rivers in the desert, move giants out of the way, bring the right people to help us. We had a consultant that was very influential, knew all the inner workings of the city. He had never been to church, didn't have anything to do with God or faith. He partied, used bad language, cursed people out. But he said, Joel, I like you, and I'm going to help you get this bill. God has already lined up the people you need for the new thing. Stay open. It may not happen the way you're expecting, but can I encourage you? God's way will be better, bigger, more rewarding, more fulfilling. Don't limit what you've seen in the past for what God is going to do in your future. God never does his greatest feats in your yesterdays. They're always in your tomorrows. God said in Isaiah, I am the one that opened a way through the waters, making a dry path through the sea. I called forth the mighty armies of Pharaoh and drowned them in the waters. But forget about all of that. It's nothing compared to what I'm about to do, for I am doing a brand new thing.
This brand new thing God is about to do is not going to be like anything you've seen in the past. We can all look back and see where God has parted Red Seas in our life, where He opened a door that shouldn't have opened, had us in the right place at the right time, and we got the job. We met that person and fell in love. He turned our health around when it didn't look good. We're grateful. We know it was the hand of God. But God is saying, you haven't seen anything yet. Forget about all of that and get ready for something awesome, something that you haven't seen, something that propels you to a new level. When you see this new thing, you're going to stand in amazement and say, wow, look what the Lord has done. I believe the reason God told them to forget about the Red Sea being parted, forget about how he brought them out of slavery, is because they would have thought he was going to do it the same way. After all, that was a great miracle. But God was saying, I have something better. Instead of parting the waters, I'm going to create the waters. I'm going to make rivers in the desert, pools to refresh you. I'm going to turn barren land into fertile land. The new thing God has for you is going to supersede what you've seen in the past. The good news is it's already in motion. The process has already begun. Even now it's swinging forth. Underground, behind the scenes, you can't see it, but the river is forming. The water is coming. The barren land is being fertilized. Yes, the doors may have closed. Don't worry, your compact center is already built. The right people are already en route. The Red Sea's partings were great, but that's nothing compared to what's coming. Here's the question. Can you perceive it? Do you believe that God's up to something new, something amazing, or are you looking back at what used to be, what didn't work out? Change your focus. No more looking in the rearview mirror. Start looking forward. Start expecting His goodness. This is a new day. God is doing a new thing in your life. If you'll receive Isaiah's prophecy, I believe and declare you're about to see unusual favor, uncommon in increase rivers in your desert, waters in the dry places, like the Israelites, freedom from captivity, from lack, addictions, sicknesses. You're going to rise higher, overcome obstacles, and become all you were created to be. You know God going to work with you just the way you are. I tell jokes for a living. How much money I done made telling jokes? Somebody interviewed me one time. Saw a picture with me and Bill Cosby. This lady said, you're still friends. How could you be friends with Bill Cosby? I said, because we was friends. How could you be friends with a man like that? I ain't know none of this. What are you talking to me for? I got the news when you got the news. He ain't never saying nothing to me about this. Well, are you still friends with him? I said, yeah. You ain't got no friends ever done something real messed up? My brother did something real messed up one time. He's still my brother. Still when I never see I got pardoned in jail doing three life sentences. He called me the other day. I hear you know, I'm waiting on him. You have a collect call from State Penitentiary. I didn't hear that. Steve, what's up? Man, it's me, dog. I said, man, what's happening? You out? No. I said, what you calling me on? I got a cell phone. Click. Because when they find that cell phone, they can't trace numbers and all of a sudden Steve Harvey numbers show up. I can't talk to this fool in here doing three life sentences with no damn cell phone. I'm famous. I can't be talking to you. And he going to call Mother Potter. Man, I can't believe Steve hung up on me. I don't accept that I am what I am and that that is what I'm doomed to be. No, I don't accept that. I'm fighting. I'm always fighting, I'm struggling, and I'm scrapping, and I'm kicking and clawing at those weaknesses to change them, to stop them. Some days I win. Some days I don't. But each and every day, I get back up, and I move forward with my fists clenched toward the battle toward the struggle and I fight with everything I've got to overcome those weaknesses and those shortfalls and those flaws on the other side of your struggle is something good on your other side of your struggle is something better on the other side of your struggle is some sort of success why would you waste one second doing something that wasn't progressing your dream what you want exists don't settle until you get it.
You need to use guilt as your fuel. You need to start feeling guilty when you're not achieving or striving towards your dream. You can use the people that doubted your dream as motivation. When your dreams are dying and when you don't have enough strength to go on, I need you to stop the procrastination. I need you to let go of all limitations. So I'm here to tell you today that you can have anything you want, be anyone you want, but you're gonna have to work. See, dreams, aspirations, they're not easily obtained, but one of the hardest things to do is to keep going. Everybody, at one point in time in your life, to be successful, you have to jump. Jumping is the hardest thing for people to do, but you have to jump. If you never jump, you'll never be successful. When you first jump, I guarantee you the parachute ain't gonna open. I promise you that. But guess what? Eventually it does open. And then you start your glide. But it starts with the jump. You have to jump, man. No matter how painful it is, I gotta keep going. I gotta keep going because what is my passion? What is my focus? Your focus and your passion will numb you to failure and to pain of striving to get to where you're trying to go. Sometimes horrible things happen to good people. Life isn't fair and it can be heart-wrenching. And if you're having one of those dark days, it's okay. It's okay. So do what you feel passionate about, passionate about. Take chances. Don't be afraid to fail. The only way to do it was to go outside the box. All you got to do is start changing the way you think. It's as simple as, it's not a magic trick. You can protect yourself from negativity. And that's what stops most people, negative thoughts. And I'm just talking to you, I don't even know. I could give you 50 things you ought to be grateful for right now. I don't even know you. Start coating your mind with gratitude. It'll change everything for you. So whenever someone said to me, it can't be done, I heard it can be done. When they said no, I heard yes. When they said it's impossible, I heard it is possible. Because I am a strong believer. Never settle. Never settle. You got to get this in your spirit no matter what. Never settle. When challenges and issues come back to back to back to back, and it seems like something is after me, something is attacking me. Something is attacking my journey. Look for the lesson in it all. If you're still breathing and you haven't gotten it done yet, you can still do it. Don't let this limitation of age, this limitation of, of background where you come from or where you live. God planted something inside of you when he designed you. Only you decide when to kill these dreams. You're more powerful than you even know. Never said. There's still time. Never settled. There's still time. You survived all the trouble you ever been in. Your survival rate is 100%. You can make your dream into a reality, but it will only take one person to believe that it's possible. It will only take one person to put in the work. That person is you. And it was because I had a goal. I'm sure people have told you to make sure you have something to fall back on. But I never understood that concept, having something to fall back on. If I'm going to fall, I don't want to fall back on anything. I want to fall forward. I figure at least this way I'll see what I'm going to hit. To begin to see and envision that happening, you can decide that I don't like what I produced here and I want higher ground. 
I found that nothing in life is worthwhile unless you take risks. Now, Nelson Mandela said, there is no passion to be found playing small and settling for a life that's less than the one you're capable of living. Keep your dreams phenomenal. Keep your vision phenomenal. Keep it phenomenal. And now I need you to get your weight up. As an individual, I need you to get your schedule up. I need you to get your life up. I need you to get your words up. I need you to get your heart up. I need you to get your action up. Stand up, take control, and do battle with your enemies wherever you find them. Now here's one more. We must also deal with the enemies within ourselves. Some of the enemies are a lot closer than that. They are within. So we're going to do. We're going to get the right information and then we're going to get narrow focus. Boom, we're going to go for it. Many of you will not be successful because you've got this giant goal and no steps to go with it. How many steps? I don't know. Like, what is it going to take for you to do it? I don't know. I just know this is my year. Can I be real with you? If you can't measure it, it ain't real. Do you realize that every day you thought you wasn't going to make it? Do you remember them days where you thought it was absolutely unbearable and you thought you wasn't going to endure that one? Do you know that your survival rate for every last one of them bad days is 100%? You, your track record for surviving bad days is 100%. You have the power to do that. That's a fact.